and welcome to the road to episode 7, the ongoing series where I chart the road to Star Wars episode 7. But this episode, this installment, this video today is going to be a little different than the ones that have gone before it. Usually I talk about some news that relates to the film, Star Wars episode 7, but this is really kind of off topic almost. But it's kind of related, I'm going to be talking about the demise of LucasArts. Um, a game company that I hold very dear to my heart because they created so many games that I love and I want to just talk to you about some of those so hopefully this video will be pretty special and hopefully I'll put as much effort into this as I want to and hopefully it'll turn out pretty good but anyway um, it fits because the reason LucasArts has kind of disappeared now is because of the takeover back in October with uh, Disney acquiring Lucasfilm and all of its subsidiaries and companies and uh, now it has been announced that uh, another company will be taking over all the Star Wars games so I want to just talk to you Go right back to the beginning, give you a quick overview of LucasArts as a company and some of the games that really stuck out in my childhood and my later life, um, games that really entertained me. So uh, I hope you enjoy, let's get right into it. LucasArts was founded by George Lucas in May 1982 as Lucasfilm Games, branching out from his Lucasfilm company to the video game market, collaborating with Atari initially to produce games. The first Star Wars game was The Empire Strikes Back for the Atari 2600 and in television that very same year. It wasn't long till Star Wars games started popping up everywhere as between 1983 and 1988 there were over 15 different console releases of a game based on the 1977 original classic. But it wasn't until the 90s that we first saw fully fleshed out and colourful adventure games based on the movies. Between 1991 and 1993, a new version of Star Wars was released on the NES, the Game Boy, the Sega Game Gear, and the Sega Master System, which was my first ever console. I'll never forget the feeling of loading up Star Wars on my Master System for the very first time. The music, the feeling of freedom at the beginning of the game as you explore Tatooine and Luke's land speeder, the excitement of finding the lightsaber and just the way it followed the film and made you feel like you were part of the adventure. You could even play as Han and Leia in the game which, along with the final space battle stages, made it feel like an all-encompassing experience. It wasn't without its flaws, the jumping sensitivity is off the charts which makes some parts of the game fiendishly difficult. I spent countless hours trying to complete the game, more out of an excitement to see more of the Star Wars world than anything. It was the first Star Wars game I ever played and one of my earliest gaming memories. By the 90s, Lucasfilm Games was now known as LucasArts, and although Star Wars games were a huge part of their output, they also specialised in other adventure games, pioneering the point-and-click adventure game in particular. Text-based adventure games had been around for a long time, but LucasArts added to that format with visuals and eventually voice acting. Question is, where's his secret lab? My first experience with a classic LucasArts point-and-click game was in 1996. My uncle, who was a big computer guy, was upgrading and gave my mum his old PC. It came with loads of games and I was instantly captivated by one called Day of the Tentacle. You play as Bernard, who along with his friends Hoagie and Laverne tried to stop an evil purple tentacle from taking over the world. The game requires you to solve puzzles and explore the surroundings, mainly based inside the Edison family motel. Time travel is later incorporated with Hoagie and Laverne being sent to the past and future, leaving you to interact with three different timelines that all affect each other. The game was just funny too, as any fans of the earlier Monkey's Island games will attest to, LucasArts always injected a good dose of humour into these titles. Thought I was gonna blow your head off there, didn't you? You were right! Wait... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You shouldn't smoke, it's a bad habit! Okay, well maybe some of the humor's hit and miss. I'll give you that. Anyway... That cracks me up every time! I love the Star Wars references in the game too. Another awesome feature of the game is that you can actually access and play the entire game Maniac Mansion, of which Day of the Tentacle is its sequel. I never played it all, but the fact it was there even back then impressed me. I will always have fond memories of the Day of the Tentacle game, and have gone on to enjoy more of the LucasArts point-and-click games over the years. 
Now, there are plenty of other Star Wars games that I played after the Master System version, though I skipped a generation when I got a Super Nintendo. It wasn't until the late 2000s that I first played Super Star Wars. So the next step for me was Nintendo 64, with games like Rogue Squadron and Episode 1 Pod Racer, the latter of which I adored. I remember staying home from school one day and just playing it for about 8 hours straight. The one that really captured my imagination though was Shadows of the Empire. In 1996, Lucasfilm released Shadows of the Empire as a multimedia project. It was essentially an interquel, a novel by Steve Perry, the video game for the N64 and PC, and a comic book series from Dark Horse comprised the three releases that tied the whole project together, with different elements of the story to be gleaned from each. The game started off at the Battle of Hoth and never let up, as you control Dash Rendar through a series of adventures on the ground and in the skies. Using the jetpack was some of the most fun times I've ever had playing a game. There was a train level that I played over and over again, it was that cool, and the space levels were just exciting and fun. It's not the best game, the controls can be clunky at times, but it still remains one of my all-time favourites. I could go on about other games like Bounty Hunter or The Phantom Menace, but I never really fully delved into everything that LucasArts had to offer. I never played the Knights of the Old Republic series or the Galaxies games, and the list just goes on and on. My last great adventure with the LucasArts game came in the form of two classics in my opinion. The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2. You play a Star Killer, which any hardcore Star Wars fan will know was Luke's original last name. He's Darth Vader's secret apprentice, set between the two Star Wars trilogies, who Vader brings over to the dark side with the intent of using him to kill the Emperor. Starkiller is a conflicted character which makes the story so much more interesting, and it's truly the closest thing to a Star Wars movie experience I've ever encountered in a video game. There are cinematic moments worthy of the big screen, and the gameplay is so fun as you use all the force powers that Starkiller has at his disposal. The end of the game takes place on the Death Star, so I won't spoil anything, but the final confrontation is epic, and you can choose your path leading to two very different endings. The sequel is just as good, but I'll leave you to search that one out for yourself if you haven't played it already. So now, after 30 full years of service, LucasArts has closed its doors. It was just announced that Disney have now teamed up with Electronic Arts to produce new Star Wars games. I have a certain degree of sadness about the death of LucasArts, a company that has provided me with so many memories and entertainment throughout my entire life, but I'll always remember that the first game I ever completed was a LucasArts game. Oh yeah, I did beat Star Wars eventually. It took me a long time, many hours, lots of stress, but I finally did it. It was a satisfying end to a great gaming experience and one I'll never forget. Goodbye LucasArts, your fantastic games will always be remembered.